Hi everyone and thanks for the opportunity to give this little presentation which is a gamba grass project update for our West Arnhem project. So Territory Natural Resource Management has um, has been funded by the National Land Care Program to run a five year project focused on protecting West Arnhem land and Kakadu from invasive species and threatening processes. And very early in the project we've identified gamba grass as one of those threatening processes. So this is this is the distribution of gamma grass across the top end. And I've just put on there also in orange where the legislative control zone for gamma grass is, which is zone B, we'll call it zone B. Now the thing about West Arnhem land is that it's directly to the east and there's Kakadu in there as well. And so we're just outside of that control zone where there's not a lot of gamba grass. And this area all outside we call the A zone, the, the um, eradication zone where theoretically any gamba grass that's in that area is a target of eradication and groups need to work together to make sure that there's no gamba grass persisting in that area. So our project is focused over about nine, nine million hectares, which is a fair bit of land. And there's a lot of Aboriginal land in that area. There's um, land managed by Jarwin Ranges, by Wadakan, by Mimau, Arafura Swamp Ranges. We've also got land managed by Barwanunga, by Ajmal Ranges. And there's ranger groups um, within Kakadu as well who are focused on managing gamba grass. There's um, Yanma Ranges as well. So there's many, many different ranger groups doing their very best to keep gamba grass out of this West Arnhem area. Kakadu's had a couple of areas they've had focus on for a number of years, decades actually. Mudjumbri, which would be near Jabiru, and Jimbat, which is down near the South Alligator towards the bottom of the park. Both have got their own challenges. Both are hard to access all of the plants before plants seed. Ground stays too damp, vehicles will get bogged or can't get across river crossings to get there to access on ground. This year, Drubu Rangers have tried to combat that using aerial drop-ins, so carrying their backpack sprayers with them and getting dropped in by helicopter to patches and then treating those patches by ground and working through a sort of a prioritisation of patches. And those patches were detected through the aerial survey um, last year and then got put into a management plan. So that's that's the northern area. Down in the south, the Werenburn Rangers and the Rangers from Mary River District are working at Jimbat, but there's a lot of feral animal pressure there and plants stay very short. So again, it's a little bit difficult to get optimum treatment timing. The South Alligator can be hard to cross uh, from the ground. So plants are already not in growing phase by the time rangers can get there and that's probably one of the reasons that that infestation has persisted as well for 20 odd years or so. So those rangers also will be focused on detecting any new plants and that means checking campgrounds, noticing things on roadsides. One of the interesting areas is down in the south of Kakadu where Mary River divides the control zone, the B zone, from the eradication zone, the A zone. And as there is quite a bit of gamba grass in the pastoral area next door to Kakadu there, TNRM are quite interested to find out, is that gamba grass passively spreading onto Kakadu? So an aerial survey just recently in May 2021 really tried to examine that. And transects were flown across both sides of the river from the headwaters traveling down towards the coast. And that was quite interesting because it detected hardly any gamba grass within a four kilometre proximity of the river and not a lot of what I would call passive spread. Plants have not moved a great deal under their own steam, but where plants were present, it was quite clear that they were next to tracks or fence lines or some means of human assisted spread had got those plants to that location. The western border of Kakadu is right up against the control zone for gamba grass. There is gamba grass growing on pastoral properties and there's been gamba grass in that area for a long time. There were even trials I think in the Port Stewart area quite some time ago. So gamba's been there a long time. And that gamba grass 
seems to have a risk of entry into Kakadu, but our surveys have pretty much shown that the passive spread is low risk and that the the real um, risk of entry is through human assisted pathways. People, people will carry seeds. So visitors, tourists, contractors, musterers carrying seeds on vehicle and equipment. And then disturbance is another um, factor which facilitates scam entry and spread, but often the disturbance is actually caused by people. So burning or clearing vegetation or turning over soil and making gamba grass easy to take hold, a lot of those things happen because of people. So again, that's following the, the human assisted pathway of spread. The one thing that rangers could probably focus on is the detectability side of it. We know that there's a lot of space out there and not always that many eyes on the ground. So where those high risk entry areas are, that's where attention needs to be focused. And that might mean, you know, checking fence lines. It might mean checking those boundary areas every couple of seasons to really understand if anything's happening there. And then focusing on those places where people are coming in and, and new infrastructure is going in and musterers are coming in, you know, putting in yards and things like that. So very targeted um, patrolling, I guess, to be able to help with the, the, um, the risk of... of detectability, um, helping gamba grass spread into Arnhem Land. Pathways of gamba grass spread for Western and Central Arnhem Land. We're looking at the Arnhem Highway, we're looking at the Kakadu Highway, we're looking at the Central Road, and we're looking at the gravel pits along those roads where once a seed might come in and a little infestation started, then within that area, those seeds might be getting collected and moved around a little bit more locally. So those are the places that we like rangers to really focus on checking. We like contractors to have, um, we like to have good contractors in place to be doing follow up in those road corridors. And part of that is around data collection so that if gamba grass is noted, there's coordinates associated with it and it can be followed up. There are some surprises and some non-surprises, I guess, with gamba grass. We know in West Arnhem Land that there's a couple of points in Kakadu that are long-term infestations. We know that there's pathways of spread, so high risk we expect things to come up where people have been moving through the landscape. But sometimes there are surprises, and we certainly had one early in the early stages of the project where when we went looking, um, using the helicopter we went looking to see whether we could detect gamba grass along some of the river crossings along the Arnhem Highway and the helicopter pilot said hey you need to go and look at those Telstra Towers so went over to the Telstra Towers and the gamba grass that was growing in um, the Sandy Creek compound it could have been there 10 years there's so much that it's spread through the fence it's under the solar panels it's starting to go off into the bush now whether that's come at some point with a contractor doing maintenance or with the actual infrastructure being installed it's hard to tell but either way it's somewhere where nobody had thought to look nobody had thought to put that into a work plan to go and address now that rangers are aware they're definitely trying to get there a couple of times a year to make sure that plants are treated and there's no new seeds going to the seed bank but that surprise came from only looking at five towers and there's many 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 towers across the top end in the eradication zone so it it's one of those things I think it should be prioritised where possible groups should be checking tower compounds and any areas of infrastructure that they haven't checked for a few seasons really should be high priority if they can possibly get there at all. So the Sandy Creek Towers close up towards Merganella out on the way to Coburg and the rangers have been now prioritising getting up there a couple of times a year to check it out and make sure that there's no seed in Gamba. A couple of the factors that are increasing the likelihood of gamba grass spread in West Ireland and Central Ireland are uh, frequent burning and Section 19 um, contractors. And I think that these aren't altogether unrelated. Frequent burning really creates suitable habitat for gamba grass spread. It loves disturbance. It loves to have the competition removed from other plants. So Areas that do get burnt frequently are always going to be highest risk for gamba grass spread should gamba grass be present already. That's one issue. With Section 19s, 
it gets very unclear sometimes as to who holds the responsibility for weed management. So if weed seeds come in through, um, through mustering or weed seeds come in through some land use, then who manages those weeds and the infestations that pop up from there? Could it be that rangers manage those, but uh, a certain amount of FIFA service should get built in to the Section 19? Perhaps that's one way it's done. Perhaps the Section 19 licence holder is responsible for the weed management. But just at this point, it's not clear. And it would be great if it could become clearer in the future, I think. Then resourcing could go to the right place to make sure that you know, gamba grass isn't being spread. Now, to keep, to keep gamba grass out is... Um, is something that requires quite a few strategies. And here are some of the strategies that Territory Natural Resource Management have really focused on. We've even gone as far as to put these strategies into a poster plan called the Regional Management Plan for Western Island Land and Kakadu with a focus on gamba grass prevention. So the strategies, or probably the top four strategies, are really involve as many people as possible and get those people to look for gamma grass before that gamma grass gets established. So we're talking about when a seed comes in, that seed might come in along a roadway, it might come in with infrastructure development or equipment brought with contractors, and then that seed falls to the ground and starts germinating and growing into a plant as conditions allow, probably a wet season starts to get it going. So we really want people to be aware that gamma grass starts to germinate in wet season and that's a really good time to keep your eye out and look for it. So we've been working with rangers to use a GPS, mark any gamba grass that they notice, take a photo of it that's um, got location recorded on their phone or some other way of making sure we know where it is, reporting it and then getting that followed up so it turns into a part of a work plan where rangers will go back to that location, especially if that plant had seeded and then the next year treat again, look for new seedlings coming up, pull them up, or if they're too large, um, apply some herbicide, try and make sure that that site gets checked until it's eradicated again. There's actually a lot of, a lot of kilometres of road to be checked. We've had rangers working together each year to, to treat maybe around a thousand kilometres of road, and those are roadways with gravel pits along the side of them. Gravel pits get used in road work, uh, new equipment, new contractors, new maintenance vehicles come in and they might be bringing new seeds with them. So every couple of years those gravel pits really need to be checked to make sure that there's no plants that have germinated and started to seed and become little infestations in those gravel pits. And as well as that, random plants just do pop up on the side of the road. Perhaps they've knocked off a vehicle as it bumped along. Particularly creek crossings seem to be a spot where gamba grass seeds have come off vehicles and started to cause little infestations. Then as well as the road patrols, we've been getting into the air where we really need to have a better look if there's a larger area to get over. There's um, been aerial surveys over parts of Kakadu and parts of Kakadu boundary where the control zone for gamba grass, the B zone, butts up against the eradication zone or the A zone for gamba grass. And we really want to understand what's happening where those zones meet together and is there risk of gamba grass uh, moving out of those B zones into the eradication zones. So aerial surveys in the last 12 months or so have covered over about 130,000 hectares and then what happens after that is that where gamba grass has been detected we can get that included in a work plan. Here are some examples of how groups go about reporting and recording what's going on. Some groups can really methodically collect information about every gravel pit that they visited and what they saw there. Another way to do it is to take photos of what they've been treating to show the change. Also being able to record, um, record latitudes and longitudes with photos so that the next person who comes along to treat the gamma grass in that location has got all the data that they need to, to be able to get back there. And all this re recording and reporting is important because if we don't have that documented when a new ranger coordinator comes in, they're not going to be aware of some of the work that's taken place beforehand necessarily and they're not necessarily going to know where does that follow-up need to occur, where is there potentially an infestation that's about to get going if nobody goes back to check. Slide nine. 
here's just another example. This is some of Jarwin's work in their bat dreaming cultural area, which is just off the highway as you approach Catherine. And with their fulcrum app, they'll record different work locations. There can be a photo that goes with that. And so then we can put that together in a little bit of a map just to keep as a record so that people can see what's been taking place where. Slide 10. As well as straight out treating, one of the focuses we have is on awareness raising. So awareness raising is really around getting land managers to understand better what they're looking for. Not everybody knows what gamba grass looks like. There's not a lot of it in Arnhem Land, which is fantastic, but they do need to be able to detect it if it is there. So working with Weeds Branch, working off the back of VET units in Ranger Ready training. So when participants are coming together already to learn about how to apply chemicals, try and include some weed identification sessions with maybe plant samples, weeds branch reps to come out and talk to people about this is what you're looking for and here's what to do if you see it. Weed hygiene is also really important. So understanding what are some strategies for making sure vehicles don't carry weeds and really getting people involved in part of their vehicle checks so that they understand, you know, here's, here's where the risk could be, here's what I need to do to reduce the risk that my group has when they move around that landscape and operate in that landscape. We've also focused a bit more widely across the region with a, a um, just a publicity program called Stop Gamma Grass in Its Tracks. And the idea of that program is that it's about making the broader community more aware, people who might be tourists, visitors, people who don't spend a lot of time in Arnhem Land, but people who potentially could be bringing seeds from Greater Darwin area as they travel, or people who might be visiting places and noticing a plant out of place, and then really encouraging them to report that so that the right ranger groups, the right people find out that it's there and understand what, um, where the risks are and how to follow up on that. A key thing for our organisation is to make sure that many people are involved because as with almost anything with a regional focus, it's only as strong as the absence of the gaps in the program. And we really would love to have all stakeholders involved working together as neighbours. This means making sure that we can support all groups. Some groups might need support with data collection. Some might need um, funds to help them with surveys or to help them just to get some fee for service perhaps to be able to cover more kilometres. Also with understanding how do we monitor, how do we measure whether we're getting some improvements with our work, is our work making a difference. So we, we try and work with each group to understand where their biggest gamba risks and issues are and work out how we can best support them. The bottom line for us is we want more stakeholders to take more responsibility. Groups are doing the best that they can. They're undertaking the awareness raising, they're trying to communicate to their outstations and to their traditional owners. They're really trying to make sure that people are aware of this weed and that it's important that it gets treated. But as well as that, there's some conversations that we're trying to have with other visitors to the land, whether it's mustering contractors or whether it's to do with infrastructure development. Anybody who moves into West Arnhem Land is actually carrying a real risk of gamma grass spread and it would be wonderful if there'd be a way to build a little bit more um, perhaps a levy or some component of um, weed management planning and follow up to just help those ranger groups be able to put resources towards checking areas where there have been new fences, new roads, musterers have come in, people have been working around the landscape. How to report gamba. So if you see gamba grass in the eradication zone, let us know. Take a photo. Take a photo of the infestation with your phone. Make sure you've got your location information on, which you can do by turning it on in your gallery settings. Text us the photo or email it through. We've got our best contact as info at territorynrm.org.au. There's even a phone number 0438 756 481. 
We would love to know where that gamma grass is so we can make sure it gets into a follow-up program. This project is supported by Territory Natural Resource Management through funding from the Australian Government's National Land Care Program. Thanks to many stakeholders and ranger groups and organisations, there are many, many people working really hard to protect West Arnhem Land and Kakadu from gamba grass. And I think that there's some fantastic um, achievements that are being made every year. And I look forward to seeing what's about to happen next year.